In this video, we're going to look at the City Sights, a mid-sized reversible seat model from Baby Jogger that, in my opinion, currently suffers from a fair amount of misrepresentative advertising, which may lead to disappointment from potential purchasers, in which the Sights is regularly toted as the quote-unquote smallest folding modular stroller, which it isn't, that it's all-terrain, which it also isn't, and that it has a one-handed fold, which won't be the case for most people. All that being said, there are actually many positive qualities with the Sights, and today then, we're going to give it a thorough rundown, going over the model from top to bottom, and examining its advantages and disadvantages in terms of child comfort, ease of use, performance and mechanics, before ending with a discussion of whether it's worth the price, and if so, for which uses, lifestyles and environments it will best suit. And starting off with some stats, the Sights clocks in at 11.3 kilos and folds down to 81 by 59 by 32 centimeters. It can take 23 kilos in the seat and 7 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. As far as child comfort is concerned, the model has a bucket seat design with an adjustable leg rest that provides a good near vertical upright position and a recline that, though not fully flat, is more than sufficient for napping. Size-wise, the sight seat is narrow at 27 centimeters, but has a more or less acceptable overall length of 96 centimeters when using the adjustable leg rest that will provide decent comfort for most children in both the forwards-facing and reversed configurations up until around two and a half to three years old or so. After this, in the forward-facing, the leg rest can also be folded down and the leg rest fabrics flipped up so that a larger child can instead rest their feet on the front frame crossbar. As far as other aspects of the seat are concerned, the textiles are a bit on the cheaper side in my opinion, and could use a bit more padding, but they're not too bad, being durable at least, and the sort of material that won't be too hard to clean if needed. The canopy has a pretty long extension, and will generally provide good sun coverage, though I do wish that they had added flaps to cover the mesh windows in the extension portion. Moving on to parent comfort, the Sights has a decent range of handle height adjustable between 99 and 109 centimeters. The shopping basket is relatively large and weight capable and is easy to access from the front with the seat reversed, while being a bit too blocked off when forward facing in my opinion due to the combination of that longer leg rest and the positioning of the central crossbar. The model can be folded down to a single piece, both with the seat forwards or reversed, quite easily in my opinion, provided that you ignore the idea that the model's weight would actually allow this to be accomplished with one hand. When folded, however, I must say that I do miss a standing fold with the sights, as, though the need to store it flat is okay if it's going right in the trunk, despite the added bending involved versus a standing model, it creates a bit of a puzzle if you need to keep it folded down at home due to a lack of space. Most of the mechanisms on the model are generally easy enough to activate and feel relatively sturdy, with the one exception being opening and closing the bumper bar, which can be a bit fiddly. As far as driving goes, the Sights has a sturdy, rigid feel, not loose side to side, and a good center of weight that allows for easy tipping and steering. Wheel size on the model, 7 inches in the front and 10.2 in the back, is pretty good for a model of this size, and allows the Sights to at least make it over larger obstructions, though the suspension unfortunately is wound a bit too tight, and consistently rougher terrain, such as old style cobblestones or larger grain gravel, will be unpleasantly bumpy despite the model's softer tires helping out a bit with lighter rough ground like lawn or dirt roads. Alright, let's move on to the mechanics of the sights then, starting off with the handle, the folding system, and the overall structure of the chassis, where the handle employs a common wire and pin telescopic setup, unlikely to malfunction or develop alignment problems down the road, barring accidents, but where the handle overall is a little on the slim side in my opinion, and while it feels pretty tight right out of the box, will likely loosen a bit over time. The folding system is locally activated, which is good as it means avoiding the longer wires used for a handle activated fold, and the folding locks themselves are well reinforced and simple internally, with the only real nitpick I might make regarding the folding system overall being that the activation mechanism on the central bar will probably need a little lubrication from time to time to keep it from getting too tough on the fingers. There is, of course, also an element of folding involved with the seat frame, but this is also a pretty simple mechanism, amounting essentially to just triggering the deactivation of a safety catch that otherwise would prevent one from folding the frame forwards with the recline adjustment trigger. When it comes to the overall structure of the chassis, the Sights has good cross support from both the front and rear frames, as well as the central crossbar, the seat frame, and the handle, with the handle again being the only area on the chassis where I anticipate any real loosening. 
Moving down to the rear frame of the model, as I already mentioned, the suspension is wound a bit too tight and would have been more suited to one of their trail running three-wheelers, while the brake system is potentially problematic in my opinion unfortunately, involving a rather thin wire that runs side to side and doesn't have an adjustment screw for mitigating changes in tension over time. This sort of setup is highly susceptible to rust in my experience, and will need regular lubrication if you want to keep it functioning in the long run, and even then, may eventually need to be replaced at some point anyway. That being said, the wheel housings are at least disassemblable, the entire rear crossbar can be removed with a screwdriver, and Baby Jogger has been pretty good in the past with keeping replacement brake components available, usually provided in the form of an entirely new crossbar. When it comes to the wheels, they're tightly fitted to the rear frame, and the locking mechanisms are contained within the housings, which is a better setup in my opinion than having the locking mechanisms inside the axles. The tires use a somewhat softer sort of rubberized foam, with a raised ridge along the apex that helps reduce drag, where the positive side of this sort of tire is that it adds a little sorely needed shock absorption to the model, while the negative side is that this sort of tire can get a bit ugly a few years on from sharp pebbles getting embedded in the rubber. Looking lastly at the front end, the Sights again has good sized wheels for a stroller of this size, and has standard suspension springs built into the forks. The swivel locks on the model are easy to activate and solidly designed using metal pins and unlikely to fail down the line as a result of wear, in particular because the front forks also sit quite tightly within their housings, an effect that's been partially achieved by using two different circumferences on the axle which better distributes horizontal pressure, and which then will protect the front wheels from developing wobbling problems in the future. So, should you get the city sights then? Maybe. In my opinion, the Sites performs reasonably well for people who need a smaller, reversible seat model for city living without a car, or for car-based suburban living for parents who need a model that's a little more durable than models like the Triv, for example, for longer trips outside of the car over ground that won't always be that smooth. And the larger wheels on the Sites also give it a little bit of an advantage in comparison to the wider market for people who need a smaller stroller but who live in northern cities that get some snow in the winter. That being said, after looking around a bit, pricing on the site seems to vary quite a bit, and heavily affects my feelings about the model, where at the lower end of the price scale, around 450 bucks, I feel that it's a bit of a steal, being significantly more durable and comfortable to use than most other budget models, while on the upper end of the spectrum, say 550 to 600 bucks, the Sites begins to look a bit shabby in my opinion in comparison to models like the Cruise V2 or Hub Plus, for example, that aren't really all that much more expensive. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.